Welcome back. In this second video, we're going to take a look at the two examples that we ended with on, in the last video. Now these are examples of line integral problems you saw in the third semester calculus class. Uh, we want to evaluate the definite integral of a function with respect to arc length or with respect to x or y. And it's going to be over a curve C, uh, which we have a description of. Now in each of these problems, we're going to follow uh, a fairly standard process. We're going to parameterize the curve we're integrating over. We're going to re replace the parts of the integral with the uh, versions that are parameterized. And then we'll evaluate what we then have. To say a bit more about each of these steps, we're going to start each integral problem by parameterizing the curve that we're integrating over. That means we're going to take x and y, and we're going to write them in terms of t uh, sometimes. Sometimes the curve will be easily expressed in terms of x or y, or maybe even uh, in terms of the arc length s. We're going to just look at the curve, and based on its shape, we'll decide which is the most convenient parameterization and work with that. Now, in all of this, we're going to remember some standard parameterizations we have for things like circles or line segments and so on. If you need to review those uh, from our earlier chapter two, please go ahead and do that. Once we decide on a parameterization, we write it down. We're going to take our formulas for x and y and replace the x and y in our integral with those formulas. And then we're going to also replace the dx, dy, or ds with appropriate uh, versions. Now, if you have a parameterization written in terms of x, then dx is just going to stay the same. dy you'll replace by the differential y prime of x times dx. And ds you'll use this formula, which is in, uh, written in terms of the uh, derivative and, uh, and dx. Now if on the other hand you have x and y both written in terms of t, then dx and dy will be found by evaluating the uh, derivatives of the function at t and timesing by dt at the end. The arc length will be written as the square root of the sum of the squares of x prime and y prime times dt. Now, after you make these uh, substitutions in the value in the integral, uh, you'll then have an integral in terms of a single parameter variable. Maybe you'll, your integral will end up being a function of x. Uh, maybe your integral will be of a function of t. But you should just have one variable left, and so then you can take the uh, integral using all the tricks you learned from first semester or second semester calculus. So moving back to the, uh, the examples we were looking at. First we want to evaluate uh, the, take the integral of 2xy with respect to the arc length s over the curve c, which is the portion of uh, the circle given by modulus of z equals 5, having argument between 0 and pi fourths. Right now, this is a, if we visualize it, it's a circle centered at the origin with radius five, which goes between the argument of, of zero and the argument of pi fourths. Now we can sketch that out if you like, please go ahead and do that. But to illustrate those three steps of parameterizing, replacing, and evaluate, we'll do the following. Because it is a circle, it will make sense to use the standard parameterization, x equals the radius times the cosine of t, y equals the radius times the sine of t, and we're going to let t run between 0 and pi fourths because these are the values of the argument. Now, if we make this choice of parameterization, we're going to replace the x and the y and the ds with parameterized versions. So x will be replaced by 5 cosine of t, the y will be replaced by 5 sine of t, and then to replace ds, we'll use that formula from the previous slide We'll take x prime of t squared plus y prime of t squared. We'll take the square root of that sum. We'll times by dt, and that will replace our, our ds from the previous integral. Now the third step is just to evaluate this. So as we take a look at the, uh, the integral, we'll notice that inside the square root, we can use a trigonometric identity. Uh, sine squared of t plus cosine squared of t should equal 1. So the value of the square root ends up just being 5 which we'll take and combine with the 5 and the 5 and the 2 beforehand to get 250. The cosine and the sine form a nice integrand where we can use a substitution. We could let u be the sine of t, and then du would be the cosine of t dt, and you'll, you'll follow the same tricks from uh, first or second semester calculus. We'll take the antiderivative, we'll evaluate at the endpoints, and we'll end up with 125 over 2 as our answer. 
All right, now moving on to the second example. We have a, an integral of this form, y dx plus x dy, where the curve we're integrating over is the portion of the graph y equals x squared uh, with, with c running from uh, 0, 0 to 1, 1. Okay, now to evaluate this, we need to parameterize first. But since the curve is already given, and y is a function of x, we'll just keep x as the parameter variable. So x will be x, y will be x squared, and in order to get the curve to go from this point to this point, we'll just let x run from 0 to 1. Now replacing the parts in the original integral with the parameterized versions, we'll replace y by x squared, x will just stay x, but then dx will remain dx, and then dy will be equal to f prime of x dx, which is, uh, you can see written there. Now, when you have uh, an integral like this, where you have multiple differentials involved, we understand that to be just sort of a shorthand way of, of saying, take this, uh, the integral of this function with respect to this, and add to it the integral of this function with respect to this. So I can split that up, give, give each of these its own integrand sign if I want, integral sign. Now, if I do that, and then I then evaluate, I'll see that I have uh, three copies of the integral of x squared from 0 to 1. So I'll combine those. We'll take the antiderivative, and we'll evaluate at the endpoints, and we'll end up with a value of 1. Now, in either case, whether you parameterize in terms of x, or sorry, in terms of t, or in terms of, of x, um, you will, at the very end of this, uh, result in an integral just in terms of a single variable. Now, as we said before, uh, the fundamental theorem of calculus will be your friend there whenever you can use it. If you can't use it, just go ahead and approximate using a Riemann sums. Uh, if that ever happens to be the case in our course, we'll tell you that that is the case. Now, that is all there is to it for these real integrals. Uh, starting next time, we'll, uh, we'll talk about complex integrals, integrals in the complex plane, and we'll talk about some pretty amazing things that happen as you look at different integrals uh, in different types of uh, uh, along different types of paths. All right, I'm looking forward to it. See you later.